it's Liz Yule from Old Staples Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. And today is another Inspire Create Challenge challenge. Uh, and this time we have a colour challenge, which is Mango Melody, Pool Party and Basic Grey. Now, I have written the blog post for this challenge over at Inspire Create Challenge. There's a link to that on my website, which the website is linked immediately below for this project. So if you hop over there, you can then find the website for the challenge. It would be great to see people enter. Uh, it's a really brilliant challenge because it is just three colours. They're three really useful colours. So why not have a go? Uh, you can find out how to do that over on the website. So I know that there are some amazing projects that the design team have come up with. Mine's a very simple slash hopefully effective one. I've just realised I haven't cut my card base, but we can do that together. So I have used the Varied Vases um, stamp set. It's got a matching punch. We all like matching punches. And it's also got a second stamp set that goes with it. So once you've got punch, you can use both. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find where it is in the catalogue, because that would be useful, really, wouldn't it? Um, it's Vibrant Vases and it's on page 61. So let me grab that. So we've got both of the stamp sets on uh, opposite sides of the page. So this is the original. And this one um, was designed with Mary Fish uh, as her million dollar achievement recognition. Uh, and then this one has come out as a second stamp set with some alternatives for the vases and some other sentiments etc. So really useful, two stamp sets, one punch, could not be better. Uh, I'm also using the Iridescent Sequin Assortment which has Calypso Coral, Pear Pizzazz, Pool Party, Pink and So Saffron, so I'm going to be picking out the Pool Party, um, which is what I've got down here, some of the little baby sequins. So let's get started. I will start by cutting my card base, just really, it's quite useful that I haven't done it because I can show you how I do it. So, I have got the stamping up, um, now retired trimmer. So I cut, because I like to photograph my cards tent fold, I cut mine long and thin, but you can cut short and fat. So the first thing I do with my blade, uh, my scoring blade, is score at about 14.8, 14.9, it's... It's not an exact measurement, but it's there or thereabouts. And then cut at ten and a half. And that gives you two card bases. Now, if you were to score that way and cut that way, then you get tent fold um, short and fat. So your card would be that way. Or you can have it so that it opens up at the left-hand side. But that's how I cut my card bases. So I cut two at once. Um, and I only have to do one score, one cut. So that's my card base. Let me grab a mat. I'm going for a smaller mat than I often do. Sizes are all over on my website and I will do them as ever now. I do uh, both Imperial, sorry, both A4, International A4 in Imperial and Metric. So inches and centimetres, and I also do the North American eight and a half by eleven. Your card will be shorter and fatter, but it will be the same uh, proportions for the for the margin. So, as I say, it's a really easy card to put together. I need a piece of scrap paper, which I have here. Don't need that for the moment. Just need the mat, and I've got mounted up my shelf. So I'm going to grab my basic grey. I've also mounted up and hidden it my little hello, which I'm actually going to stamp first because that will help with the positioning of the shelf because I want a little space at the bottom for the sequins, then the hello and then the shelf. And it's all around uh, what the eye likes. So the eye likes things either clustered together or far apart. Now the trick is to get this straight, which it is. 
So ink up, hold in place, do live, give the ink a chance to transfer. Then I'm just going to ink up one end of the shelf and come in on top there. It's almost straight. And then I just need, let me grab this, I'm going to pop a pencil mark just down from where the top of the vase will be so that I can stamp my flowers knowing that they're going to be in the vase. So the flowers, I'm just picking the same flowers I used before and just stamp those down. And that's everything I need with the basic grey. So I can pop that to one side. For the Mango Melody, the only thing I need is a little flower insert. Now this is a, these are all two-step stamps, so you can use the outline of the vase um, and then the two insides. I'm just using the solid. Then you've got outline leaves, you've got just a stem, sorry, outline flowers, just a stem, but they all match up. So this goes in here, these go in here. You've got an orchid, you've got a tulip, which you can actually punch out with the with the punch and then you've got this cluster so some really nice alternatives and I'll pop the punch there so that you can just see what that looks like while I ink up my mango melody and just press down and there we go nicely in the middle of the flowers so I just need a little scrap of whisper white for the vase. Now it's always worth uh, remembering which way up your punch is. So my vase is actually going to be upside down um, and I need it near the edge. So let's close the Mango Melody, open the pool party and grab my vase. Now I have used this a few times but I'm still going to just rough it up a bit with the back of my hand just so that it takes the ink better. So I'm going to stamp it upside down. I mean, I say it's upside down. This might be the way up that you want your vase. And then just stamp that down. And there's our vase. Let's get rid of some of these stamps. So all I need to do is take my... Probably would have been better to go that way. I wouldn't have wasted so much card, but never mind. So I'm going to take my vase and punch. Now it is quite a stiff punch because it's going to go through lots of layers so don't be surprised that it's it's not just a circle it's lots of little bits. Uh, <coughs> excuse me which does mean that it does tend to be a little stiffer to punch through. So that's that, don't need that waste, don't need that anymore. Yes, we will. We need that some more. Now, I'm actually going to... I have a thing. If that is there, to my mind, that then looks like it's in midair because there's a white border round the vase. Now, I don't mind white border round the sides, but I object to it at the bottom. So I'm just going to snip that off before I pop it on there. So I just need a couple of dimensionals. One there and one there. Peel those off and pop my vase down so that it sits on the shelf and the flowers come out of it. Then I'm going to, I think now I will put the um, sequins on. So I've got my little pot of sequins here. This is the only bit that is fiddly. So what I do is I pop a tiny weeny bit of glue. And I like the multi-purpose adhesive for this. Just there. And I'm going to find small pool party. So that's one, two, three, let's turn that one over. So that's my three sequins. 
I'm going to swap ends because I quite like using this to then hold things in place. And it also means I don't stab myself with the um, pointy end. So take your pick, nice, easy to easy to pick up and apparently drop. Um, easy to pick up um, sequins and those sorts of things and then just pop it on the glue and then use the flat end to flatten it down. Pop it on the glue, flatten, pop it on the glue and flatten. And it's this point where you can, if you've got one that's slightly skew with, you can just move it about and then just make sure they are well and truly stuck down. Get any glue off the end of your spatula, put the lid on. Important to put the lid on your sticky end so that it stays sticky. Then I'm just going to take my Wink of Stella and add some Wink of Stella to my vase just so that it's nice and glistening. And I like to put a reasonable amount on so that it's very, very shiny. And then just squeeze to make sure you've got liquid in the barrel. Yep. And then take the lid and just whack your wink of Stella against the lid and then you get a nice splatter of wink of Stella. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see that if I tip it towards the light but in in person there's a lovely sort of shimmer. So then we can get rid of that. And we just need to put our card together. So I need a piece for the inside. Now I know I don't normally put insides in, but I'm going to be good this time. So fold your card in half, bone folder, press, and then some snail. This is still a wee bit wet, but I'll be brave. Pop some snail down on the back of your card. Yeah, and I've got shimmer all over my grid paper, but that's fine. Make sure you've got your card the right way up. Ask me why I say that. And pop your piece down. And then I like to press from the back. And then just... Oh, I know what I was going to do with that. <laughs> Which was why I put it in. Um, right. So I just need my scrap paper again and I need to find my, 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 there we are, chamois, because I just want to clean that off because that's had basic grey on it. Grab my Mango Melody again and just so that there's something on the inside as well as on the outside, I'm going to stamp the outline twice, once first generation, once second generation on the inside, just so there's a little bit of something on the inside. I knew there was a reason why I was putting the inside in. Get rid of that. And more snail. I like using snail on Whisper White, particularly if you're going to write on it. Um, I would have been quite happy to use Tombow on the back of the mat, but uh, as I knew I was going to new, use snail on the inside, uh, I thought I'd use snail on the outside as well. The Tombow works fine on the inside, but it can sometimes leave a little um, lump because it's obviously got more dimension. So there we are, two really simple, really quick cards to make. You could, you could rattle these off really quickly. So, as I say, we've got Pool Party, Mango Melody, Basic Grey. I hope you've enjoyed that. Do go and have a look at the other designs that we've got to inspire you. They truly are some amazing, amazing designs. I've gone for the quick, easy, uh, simple option just to show that there is the alternative of something a little quicker. Um, if you've liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't already subscribe, I would be thrilled if you would. I'm about 150 off 7,000 subscribers. Um, 
and I would really, really like to hit 7,000 subscribers soon. Uh, and at the point where I do, I will do a craft room tour now that I've more or less finished tidying up my craft room. Um, so that's just a little incentive if you don't already subscribe and you like craft room tour tours, now's the moment to do it. If you need any of the products and you're in the UK, they are linked below. And of course, remember that at the moment we've got the extra extra joining promotion, which is fantastic. So if you're in any of the um, European stamping up countries, which is the UK, France, Austria, Germany or the Netherlands, I would be thrilled to have you join my team. We cover the UK and Europe now, so uh, you would be very welcome and there will be people around to support your crafty habit. Thank you very much indeed, and I look forward to seeing you very soon.